Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Sunday morning, October 7th. I haven't filmed the video in a little bit, so I wanted to get back into it, and it's supposed to be hopefully a pretty nice fall day here. I'm hoping to take the kids out either to go ride the local trains. Um, they do this awesome autumn foliage thing up through the mountains of Jim Thorpe, or maybe go do some pumpkin picking. So I wanted to get this video filmed and hopefully upload it today. We'll see. So this one I'm going to be doing for Blue Night Rubber Stamps. <clears throat> this card I showed last year and what I did last year as a technique I'll see if I can find the video and link it was um, I did an alcohol ink background so I took a glossy piece of cardstock stamped this out um, and then did alcohol ink for the foliage and it came out really really pretty so this time I want to do a little something different we're gonna stamp it out but I want to do watercolor markers with it so off to the side here I do have my collection of zig my mermaid markers and then of course my Arteza markers so I have all of those out I have a paper towel a couple of watercolor brushes paint brushes um, and then some water so the first thing is the paper that I have is this Distress Watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz, and I'm going to be using the smooth side. I have that set up in my Misty. The stamp is a cling red rubber stamp, so you want to take your foam piece out of your Misty. And then I have that. The stamp is a little larger than the paper, which is fine. I have the magnet up at the top there, and we can cut it down if we need to. The ink I'm going to be using is the VersaClair, VersaFine Claire Black Ink because it is a super black ink, um, and it does well with watercoloring. We're going to heat set it. So we're going to stamp this a couple times so we get a nice, crisp black image here. And I like this stamp because even though it looks really detailed, it um, it has a lot of easy to color areas. So that's actually pretty good. I'll do one more. I don't really think I need to do any more, but I'll do one more anyway. So what I would like to know from you guys is what traditional fall activity do you do with your family? Um, obviously, when my kids were real little, I'm just going to take this out and set it aside. <clears throat> we used to do, um, you know, pumpkin carving and things like that. We don't do that so much anymore, um, but we do like to get a couple pumpkins and put them out on the porch to make it look nice but the big thing is is going out and doing the trains I've been doing that since Xavier was a real little baby and it's a cute little fall festival they do in our uh, in our area it's about a 45 minute drive for me but it's so worth it to get to ride this little old steam train and go up through the mountains and see the fall foliage all right so I just cleaned off my stamp while that ink is setting I'm gonna put my misty away And what's nice is these come with these nice laminated backer boards, so you just put your stamp back on there. And you can keep this as a reference of your image if you wanted to keep that out as well. All right, so I'm just going to take the heat tool to this real quick just to set it. <coughs> And I do the back side so that it doesn't warp. Now at this point, if you were afraid of it warping, you could um, tape it down to a board. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get into painting it. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in a little bit. That's a little better, right? Okay. And again, I just have my little cup of water off to the side here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to start with the trees, I think. I'm just going to wet them a little bit. There's really not too many. Just to give that paper some time. 
and also the bench because the bench I would imagine is also going to be any area that I think should be brown. And yes, some of that water is going to soak in and dry. That's okay. We can always go back and re-wet it. It's just going to give something for that color to hold on to. So let's see here. What do I have in terms of brown? So I have this lighter one called oatmeal. Just gonna go in with that. And all you're going to do is just lightly trace your image where you think there would be that color. You don't, it doesn't have to be perfect again because the way that this image is drawn, it's very loose, it's very artsy, it's very easy to do a watercolor scene and watercolors are not perfect. That's what makes them fun. So I'm just gonna lay down this lighter brown. This is an Arteza oatmeal is the name of the color of this one. And use whatever you have if you have actual watercolor paints. Um, I find these are a little easier to use. There's a little more control with the markers. I'm just laying down my base color there. And I'm gonna go with a little darker color. This one is Arteza, or sorry, not Arteza, Zig Color. Sorry, the other one's Zig Color too. Um, this is just called Regular Brown. So again, just going to go in and add some areas. Follow where the shadows already are. I am by no means an artist, but I love when other artists make a beautiful design like this it makes it super easy for me to look like I'm an artist but I am not an artist I am a stamper I'm just going to go in with some of that color and just drag it out and again very loose it doesn't have to be Real artsy. Now there, I got a little too much water on there. I'm just going to take a paper towel and dab that up. <clears throat> the water will reactivate that color and move it along. Now, if there's any place you think you have too much color, it doesn't look right, just resaturate that area and take a paper towel and, and soak it back up. And we're going to get back to that bench in a second. All right, so those were the more detailed areas. Now, in the background, there is a small area where it is what I would consider the sky or if this were near a lake. It's kind of on the horizon there. <clears throat> so this is an Arteza blue marker, and I'm just kind of going to do that horizon almost as if you're looking off and you see that there's that that blue area so again it could be water it could be sky whatever your imagination wants it to be but it's just right there on the horizon <clears throat> you could also use a water brush instead of um, a cup and water, whatever you have handy. I didn't have my water brush in front of me. All right, so then the rest of this to me is just fall foliage. So you just think about the colors that you have that you would put down for fall foliage, right? So I think the majority of the ground where it's kind of open here is still going to be green.
and again because of the way this is drawn there is no definitive lines on what anything is so you make it any way you want it you could make this a nice spring screen scene you can make the whole thing green but I just I imagine this as a, a fall foliage scene Sorry if you guys can hear Miss Leah over there singing. You want to say hello? Yeah. Just say hello. Yeah. <laughs> She's over there in her own little world. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we need some, like, golden yellows. This is a Jane Davenport mermaid marker. Just going to put some of that in. Again, the more water you have on your paper, the more you incorporate as soon as your marker goes down, the more it's going to bleed. If you want a more controlled look, use the marker with less um, water or put the water on at a little later time and it won't bleed right away. It won't spread. I want this to be a nice, bright, Like a New England autumn scene. That's how I'm imagining this. Driving down. Curvy road through fall. Beautiful splendors of color. Put a little bit of red in there. It's more like a pink. It's like a coral. We won't use too much of that because that's kind of a weird pinky color. And again, there are no rules. It's all in your imagination. It can be as bright or as muted as you want. It's a little bit darker green. I'm just using kind of shadow let's see what other colors do we need here we have red orange and blue green how about a darker brown do i have a darker brown I'm just taking my water brush and just diluting that color and spreading it out. And this, this watercolor paper absorbs pretty quickly, so it doesn't take very long for it to grab that color and move. So you can keep layering colors and adding more and more depth and colors into that background. I know 
there's a lot of white in here. We'll get back to that. Just want to get it nice and wet so that color flows a little easier. Don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it getting muddied. Just have fun with it because even if the colors mix and they get muddied, they're going to make other colors. You, you know, you're going to get, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to make brown? Well, that's what color the leaves are. Leah, well, what are you beating over there? And you could do it a more controlled way. You could make one tree maybe going red, orange into yellow, one still green going into yellow or red, one going into brown. But I like this haphazard kind of everything's mixed up all together kind of look. That red might be a little too bright. Maybe should have toned that down a little bit. can see that this is starting to come together now. Again, just going to go in with water, try to soften up any of those harsh lines, try to mix some of those colors together. And it depends too what kind of paper you're using, how much water you're using, what kind of medium you're using, what kind of, you know, if you're using markers or watercolors, they are all going to mix and change. Um, Their colors might dry back a little bit. Traditional watercolor paints do kind of dry back a little bit. I find these markers do kind of hold their vibrancy. See, adding that water kind of pushes the colors out. They mix with each other. It's not as harsh. It looks more watercolored. For my bench, I think I need to go a little darker on the bench here. Oh, 
And I feel like some of my trees got lost. I'll just go back in there and add some more of that brown in there to try to bring those trees back out. What do you guys think? So then what I will do is dry this panel a little bit. I'll then cut it down. I'll probably mount it on a dark card base, like maybe a dark brown, um, just to really make those colors pop, and then put a nice sentiment on that. But what do you think? You think that's a nice looking watercolor, almost water, faux watercolored card? That's what we'll call it, faux watercolored. So if you have any questions, post them down below. Again, the stamp that I used was from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. It's called Park Bench. And um, their website is bluenightrubberstamps.com. And again, it's a very versatile set because you can make it a fall scene. You can make it a nice spring scene. You could make it a beautiful winter scene even. So maybe we'll try that next time. But there you go. Again, if you have any questions, post them down link below. And again, I want to know what kind of fall activities you guys do with your family. I would really like to know so I can start some new traditions with my kids. If you like this video, I appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye, guys.